Yo, what's up, YouTube? It's Studio here. Gonna be doing another video today, and this is gonna be about the Yu-Gi-Oh organization top eight decks from the turn tournament number three. If you haven't heard of this, these guys, these guys do real competitive tournaments on Dueling Network for real money. The first place guy actually got seventy dollars for this, um, but the the only problem with these tournaments is that you have to actually pay money from PayPal and stuff. It's like, I mean, I would I would enter these tournaments, but there's no way I'm paying real money just to play online cards. I mean. I know it would be nice to win, but I mean, still, uh, maybe like one day I'll try it out, but definitely not in the near future I will be entering one of these, just because there's no way I'm going to be paying real money. But the reason I'm making this video is because, again, Dueling Network is down two hours in the morning. Like, whenever I want to record on Dueling Network, they're always down. This is like the third time in one week. It is just so annoying. I cannot stress in words, but on to the main point of the video. I thought I'd leave a link to the description in this video and um, go over some of the deck lists um, real quick. And if you want like um, a more deep analysis of my opinion on some of the deck lists, leave your comments below, and I'll be sure to make um, a more deep analysis video. But um, going on to the top deck, top eight decks, there were three Fire Fist, two Prophecy, one Fire King, one Heretic, and one Dark World. So, and my top eight or no top 10 decks of the format I did say Fire Fist was going to be the best deck in my opinion and so far that is what has been happening just because um, Rekindling and Wolf Bark is just and 3 Tinky like is just so consistent and, and if you open Leopard and Tinky or you open Leopard and Tenson you get a free you get that spirit play which is just so broken it's just a plus 4 without any effort so going on to the first place deck list this was um Prophecy so, you know, pretty standard. He's playing that one guy, the one searcher guy, which is um, a pretty decent choice because he gets to add your conference to your hand. And then he's playing Double World. A lot of people are playing Double World, too, which um, I think is pretty good. And looking in the side deck, um, Prophecy is not really maining MST, and they're really only playing um, 3 MST, 3 Raigeki Break, and the Fate for their removal. So they still definitely have removal. Um, and they're playing that new card, or not that new card, but that retort card, which is going up in price quite a bit, and it definitely uh, has a lot of potential. It's good for the Prophecy Mirror Match, and I guess the Fire Fist Mirror Match. Going on the second place deck list, 4 axis Fire Fist, not the Spirit Be spirit and Leopard build. Um, but this is kind of interesting, because he was only playing, like, um, not that many traps, just the 3 Tenson and the, just the staple, like, 4 right there. Um, but in his side deck DNA Surgery, really good um uh there's nothing i really gotta say like he's maining the double gaioku and the triple tenson and the triple pot um which is pretty um unique i gotta say in my opinion um one thing with this tournament is that it really only there was no bujins which is really surprisingly i really thought bujins were gonna be in here going on to the the other the third place prophecy again it's basically the same exact build except he was maining Divine Wrath and um, Siding Needle Ceilings, but I mean, still the Double World and the Double... I forgot what that card... I think it's Stoic. The Double Stoic and Double World builds are going to be really good. Just um, A lot of people are just forgetting how broken World is. Like, if you can get off a World, it's just so much advantage. It's so hard to get over, and it's just so hard to come back, to be honest. Going on to 4th place, 4X is Fire Fist again. So, no 3X is actually topped, which is surprising, like, because 3X is, uh, definitely is really good in my opinion, especially with the whole Leopard Spirit combos you can do. But his side deck, he's still signing Twister, Debunks, Deep Prism. His side deck was um, a little bit different than the other guys, which is pretty good, but it still is a pretty good side deck in my opinion. Um, he's signing Mind Crush, which I hate this card so much. I hate Mind Crush. That's just my opinion. Um, but, you know, you get a decent look at that. Going out of 5th place, Fire Kings. This was, um, he did the deck look kind of weird, but I mean, still, this deck is, um, really, really scary. I mean, Circle is just so good. I mean, this deck and top deck, Rekindling out of nowhere, and then Wolf Park. Like, why does it have to be like, so expensive? Like, this is such a budget deck, but I mean, just one card just ruins the whole deck. And it's, it's just, it's such a shame. Um, but anyway, guys, you get to look at that. Um, he is citing skill drain, so watch out for the skill drains. Do not be surprised. If they are going to be citing skill drain, and they are going to be citing um, that card right there, which is a really devastating card against some matchups. Going on to the next um, deck, we have Heretics. Um, he's playing the, the Chaos Heretic build. He's not playing any other vanillas than the three Labradorites. Um, taking in the one cards against it. This was actually used by xCloud, which I've mentioned before. But, I mean, triple M7, the extra deck, that's a little overkill. You really only need, like, 
one or two, to be honest. Like, you could get away with playing one. I would recommend playing two, but if you're a budget player, because this is a kind of a budget deck, I know Gaia Dragons have gone up in price quite a bit. Um, but, I mean, the main deck of this deck is pretty cheap, to be honest. And um, the side deck, I mean, Electric Viruses are cheap, too. This the really only hard stuff you have to get is, I guess, um, the Gaia Chargers, the M7, um, Star Eater, and, I guess, a Tomb. So, I mean, I guess it's kind of nice, too. But this deck definitely is really scary. Do not underestimate it and definitely have a side deck for it. And definitely um, start siding Steel Swarm Roach because I, I'm looking at this guy's build and, like, he has no outs to Roach. Like, Roach can give you, like, a free plus two against this deck. And the fact that the only cards in his side deck is, like, Encore. And that's, like, his really only out to Roach, which is just really nice. Going on to the next place, we have 4 axis Fifers again, he's maining Max C, which is kind of unique, because a lot of people have gone uh, maining the Veilers, but he is um, citing the Mistake, which I think is a really good option. Um, but no one is still citing the Chaos Chapel, which I, I just don't get, because Chaos Chapel is amazing. Um, but, you know, this is a pretty standard build. He's playing, like, a more trap-heavy build, which is um, pretty nice, too. And going on to the 8th place Dark World, which, um, I mean, I guess it's kind of nice. I'm not the biggest fan of Dark World, but, I mean, it still is a pretty budget deck. This was definitely by far the most budget deck that top 8 top I mean, I mean, all this stuff, like, the whole main deck is pretty cheap. The side deck is cheap, and, like, the extra deck, like, you really don't even need all this stuff in the extra deck. I mean, Stardust got reprinted. I guess you can play, like, one Fergaland and, like, this guy right here, which is, um, I think, like, $10, but, I mean, that's really it. Um, but, you know, a pretty standard Dark World Turbo deck, I mean, the three upstarts and the three drag downs, the three trade ins and three Dark World dealings. So pretty nice right there. But anyway guys anyway guys I'll leave a link to this um, website in the descriptions. If you would like to enter one of these tournaments, they have them I think either once or twice a week, which is really nice. Um personally me, I'm still not the biggest fan of paying real money just to play online. Just my opinion on that one. But I mean if you're really interested you can win. Like I know second place got like thirty seven dollars and first place got seventy dollars. So I mean that if you can win like these consistently or even top eight gets like a, a prize pool, so if you can like top them pretty decent amounts of money and um there's only like forty or thirty people who enter, so it's not like a hundred or two hundred people who enter, so it's kinda nice there. When you guys watching, like this video, subscribe, Stu Dog is signing out.